We're now joined by John Ramnick, who is the leader of the Republican Party in the state assembly, otherwise known as the minority leader in the assembly. Good to see you, John. Good to see you, Steve. Thanks for having me on. We're uh, taping on the 4th of August. We're in the middle of a storm right now. Hopefully the power will stay on and we'll have this conversation. Speaking of power, watch this awkward transition. Um, let's get right into Governor Murphy, then we'll talk about President Trump in a second. Sure. How would you rate or describe the governor's leadership uh, and the way he's utilizing his executive power in the midst of COVID-19 as, as to where we are right now? Well, it's up and down. My main concern is that it's not as transparent as I think it should be. I think Senator Loretta Weinberg came out, had some concerns about where he gets his numbers. Steve Sweeney, the Democratic Senate president, said it. I said, why not have hearings on these issues? Why just go back to a back room, come out and make announcements? Look, some of these decisions are good decisions, but people get frustrated because they don't hear the debate. They don't, there's no transparency. That's an important part of leadership. And it's been four months in a state of emergency. You know, it's time for the public to hear the debate. Well, by the way, when this is seen, it may be more than four months, five months, close to even a six, but respectfully, devil's advocate, Assemblyman Bramnick, isn't it fair to say that in this situation, in this pandemic, that the governor has to make quick decisions and based on the information at the time, and you don't have the ability to have the legislative process and the legislature weigh in and hearings, that it's just a totally different time and therefore the status quo won't work. You don't need the legislature because he, he's already said a state of emergency. So you don't need legislation, but you can have a panel discussion. But Who's why hearings to make an executive decision? Well, the question becomes, have the restaurant owners have an opportunity to be heard in front of the public? Epidemiologists, multiple doctors haven't been heard. People who run restaurants uh, inside and outside have not been heard. So the bottom line is have hearings and then after the public debate, say, I heard both sides, now here's my decision. And don't tell me there's not enough time for that because you, gotta, you can do this 24 hours a day, have hearings. We've had hearings on things that are and half as important. I just think the transparency has been bad. I think this virus is bad. I believe in the medicine. I'm not saying this isn't serious. I just think I want to hear from everybody in a public debate. And the Democrats say the same thing. But before we move to President Trump, I'm curious about this to some Brown, Nick. You've always been outspoken. You're always, uh, your reputation is as someone who works with the, quote, other side of the aisle as a Republican, working with Democrats. But at the same time, where we are right now, and again, this will be seen later, the transmission rate is going up in New Jersey. There are more cases. There is a problem here. Yes, in other parts of the country, as we do this program, it's worse. But aren't you worried that if we open up, as Governor Chris Christie, who you were very supportive of, said recently on, on, on this series, hey, it's time to open up. Would you not have that point of view, given the fact that the numbers are going up as we do the program? This reminds me of every other debate in the world. Everyone is an extremist. Open up, don't open up. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that there is a middle ground. People need to hear and have an opportunity to be heard. And People should not be frustrated because they don't have a voice. At least when, when people are heard, they can accept the decision. The bottom line is, I'm concerned about the virus. We need to limit it. But I'm going to tell you, it's very hard to lock down a society. So that's why you need public support. You need a constituency. You need transparency. You know, the last time you were in the studio with us um, at NJTV, we were talking about President Trump. And you, again, have never held back on stating that the lack of civility, not just in politics overall, but also particularly in Washington, that the president has contributed to it. Let me ask you this. How would you rate the president beyond the civil discourse or the lack of it, which we'll talk about in a moment, how would you rate the president's leadership and his performance um, from a national level on COVID-19? Terrible. Uh, just terrible. I mean, one day he says one thing, one day he says the other thing. And I think the polls show that. And I'm worried because if you have a Republican president who doesn't lead, at least take a position. If you want open society and you're consistently in favor of open society, maybe people go along. I disagree with that. I think you need some restrictions with respect to COVID. But to go back and forth, it hurts us as Republicans in the state of New Jersey. Uh, look, just because I'm a Republican doesn't mean I'm in a cult. If somebody does something, in my judgment, that I think is wrong or improper, 
and the person happens to be a Republican, what should I say? I'm not gonna say anything because I'm a Republican. That's not how it works anymore. It used to be, look how this president has criticized every, almost every prior Republican president has gone after Bush. He's gone after Senator McCain. He's gone after Marco Rubio, he even attacked Chris Christie. If he's allowed to attack people, he's allowed to disagree, or should I say, call names. It's not disagree. He also does it with his own, with his own public health professionals. As we right. do this program, so, so, whether it's Dr. Fauci or Dr. Burks, again, things may change, but publicly critical of his own leaders in the area of public health. That's why I say it's terrible. And, you know, my concern is this. I'm concerned about the Republican Party in New Jersey because if the image is somebody meets me and they go you're a republican oh you must be trump look uh that's not the way the world works just because you're a democrat you're a former assembly person that doesn't mean you're like every other democrat i start out arguing for civility i'll continue to do that and i'm concerned about that now that doesn't mean i like the left wing of your party of the democratic party I that's not my party assemblyman I'm sorry, it used to be your party. I'm sorry. Yeah, you tell you, you're referring to my very undistinguished one term in the legislature back in the day, but go ahead. Everything you do is distinguished. You can see, look at how you look. Um, so the, the bottom line here is I'm deeply concerned about this wildly left part of the Democratic Party. That's why I'm frustrated, because when I see a president uh, who's a Republican and he gets into fights with everybody, I don't see how that's helpful. I don't get it. I don't think New Jersey, look, New Jersey is the purple state. And if we, if we find out that this president, okay, gets everybody upset at him, that's not helpful. Simple so let me that. ask you this. Senator, I want to follow up on something. By the way, if you're listening on the audio side, this is State Assemblyman John Bramack, the leader of, of the Republicans in the State Assembly. Um, you actually texted me offline. We had a conversation offline about um, the late, great, iconic Congressman John Lewis. His funeral, I believe it, Barack Obama had just finished speaking, and you and I had a conversation offline, and um, President Bush was there, President Clinton was there. John Lewis' track record speaks for itself um, as a civil rights leader, as a member of Congress. The president, President Trump, chose not to be there. It bothered you. Well, President Trump, I heard him react. So he said that John Lewis didn't come to his inauguration, uh, didn't come to speeches, and therefore he wasn't going to go to the funeral. Look, when former presidents go from across the aisle, I believe that former presidents uh, should all go because it sends a message. And the current president, the current yes. president. And here's why. You've got, in politics, you cannot take this stuff personally. Do you realize that if I took things personally, I wouldn't be able to meet with the leadership of the Democratic Party. I wouldn't be able to meet with Murphy. I wouldn't even be able to meet with Chris Christie, okay? Because at some point in time, someone does something to you. My father said, if you look too closely at all your friends, you won't have any friends, right? We have to get way above the personal issues the statement, somebody didn't introduce me, right? Someone didn't come to my a fundraiser. Didn't some, someone didn't come to my, when I won this last election. No, it's not about me. It's not about President Trump. It's about public policy, Americans and New Jerseyans. And you got to get above it, get over it, okay? So what message did President Trump send by not going to Congressman John Lewis's funeral? He took John Lewis's uh, not showing up personally. We in politics don't, we cannot take things personally. So I'm saying he wasn't above the fray. You must be above the fray. You have to be bigger than that. And that's a concern to me. You got to get, oh, you can't take this stuff personally. How can you get anything done? So in the moments we have left, I'm curious about this, uh, Simon Bramnick. You, you've been very critical of the president and of his leadership, but in terms of the two-party system, what impact do you believe the president has? Because as we do this program, he said, listen, we may have to push the election. I don't trust the election. It's bogus. It blah, 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 fake news, the whole, whole bit. What if the president says, I do not accept the result? You're laughing. I do not accept the results of this election. I'm not going anywhere. 
Well, let me just tell you, in this country, uh, if, in, if he wins or loses, but assume he doesn't for a second. Well, if he I'm wins, not going anywhere. If he wins, he's staying, right? But yes. if he loses, what's going to happen is the Supreme Court will give an order that he shall be removed. And I trust the military. I trust our institutions to, to easily, at that point in time, it will be executed. The order of the Supreme Court, I guarantee you, will be executed. Should it come to that, Assemblyman Bramnick? Of course not. Of course not. But just, just let's keep, I want to leave one thing with you on this. Sure. Last time I ran, I had the Democrats on my left, and I had two guys on the right that says, I'm not Trump enough. Look, my job is We ran is against not, you in a primary. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. This is the general election. Oh, in the general election. That's no, right. No, they I'm didn't sorry. want to run in the primary. So I, these people said I wasn't Trump enough on the right. On the left, they said I'm too much <laughs> like Trump. What I am for are the people of the state of New Jersey and common sense. What happened to common sense? If a president goes, I don't like the election, I'm not leaving, you sound like a big baby to me. Assemblyman John Bramnick, the leader of the Republican Party um, in the state assembly. We don't know what the future holds in New Jersey. He may be a candidate statewide down the road, but either way, well, we'll continue to have- And if I run, respectful. it's run on common sense. That's what I'm running on. I appreciate that. And also the other thing we appreciate, Assemblyman, is your accessibility to us in the media and to the civil discourse we always have. Thank you so much. All the best to you and your family, John. Thank you, Steve. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm Steve Adubato. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.